So yeah, good morning everyone. Today's project, I'm working on the kitchen cabinets. This past weekend, we sanded, peeled, cleaned, prepped these cabinets to paint. We started off uh, using a hand sander, just trying to get off the surface paint and realized that uh, it kind of starts to peel off if you just kind of chip at it for a little bit. These cabinets had like four coats of paint so uh, we decided to actually peel off all the old paint using a heat gun. That was a long process. We did try an electric sander as well. Both of those methods do work. They are both very time consuming, so pick your poison. So at this point, the outside of the cabinets are already painted. I have to finish painting the insides where we just uh, lightly sanded with the mechanical sander. After that, I'm going to finish installing the rest of the hardware and we're going to move on to the next room because the kitchen is almost done besides a little bit of plumbing work and a little bit of woodworking that I need to do. You might have wondered where I've been. Well, I've been doing this and it's really hard to take videos and make quality content while being a handyman, fixing things, working on job sites, that kind of stuff. But I've been working a lot, so I'm around. Man, I can't figure out how to explain exactly what I said in the video, so I'm gonna give it my best. Basically, the video cut out. I was talking about how I was raised, how my parents taught me to save and spend my money. I also talked about how I was fortunate enough to have a really good job at a Fortune 500 company for eight years and how that really set me up for success, just grinding it out and doing the job. Even though I didn't really like it every day, I still just went to work, did my best. I always had a smile. The last two years of that job, I really felt a strong calling to just go, like just go do what you're supposed to do. And I didn't know what I was supposed to do. And I explained all of this so lovely in that video and I wish I had it, but it is, it's fully corrupt. There's no saving it. I've tried everything I know how to do. Along with my parents raising me the right way and teaching me certain things along the way that are really helpful now um, and having uh, one of those things that they taught me being always keep a really good job that led me up to the decision to finally be able to quit that full-time fortune 500 full benefits five weeks vacation every holiday off paid I wanted to give all of that up to follow my dreams and I wish I had that video clip because this is not showing the enthusiasm that that actual clip had. Not only did I have a really good job, my parents taught me to budget well. They really told me to watch my spending and look every month at my statement and see what I spend my money on. And conveniently enough, my bank actually gives me a pie chart every month of what I spend my money on. It's really cool. So I use that chart, for example, when I was trying to save more money so I could buy my first house sooner. I got on that pie chart and I looked on there to see every month where was my cash going. Where was I spending the most money? And uh, it turns out, as a 21-year-old, I was going out a lot. I was eating lots of good food and having lots of great drinks with lots of good people. Like, that's what you do. You're supposed to have a social life. You go out and have fun, right? I found out through the pie chart I was spending $500 a month just eating out, eating junk, eating fast food, eating takeout, getting drinks. There was a span of a few months where I was spending $1,000 a month. And to some people, that might not sound like a lot of money. That might be normal to you. Well, I wasn't raised to go out and eat and drink out. Like, I was taught how to cook at home. I actually would rather cook at home than go out and have a meal because I know what goes into the food that I am making. After cutting back my spending on eating out a lot, I was able to save substantially more money per month for that first down payment that you need to buy your first house. So yeah, from age 21 to 23, I had a huge change in my life. 
I had a lot of life lessons learned in that short amount of time. And uh, all of those lessons are really a part of what's made me me today. You know, someone asked me the other day, hey, why'd you stop making videos? Well, I didn't. I'm actually on Instagram. Go check out my Instagram feed and you'll see exactly what I'm doing that week. Well, once I realized I was spending so much money on those activities, I definitely put a stop to it. So by age 22, I had already had a pretty good chunk of savings. At least, what I thought was good for someone my age. Heck, having any kind of savings at that age, I think you're doing pretty good if you have that. 22 went by fast, 23 came, and life got real interesting. I had a lot of things happen that I had to learn from, and I had to learn fast. And I'll definitely make a video about that someday. Well, when it finally came down to it, I was in the house market, finally. It took me so long. I've been looking at houses for three or four years at this point. Just looking, just browsing, and every year I would watch the house's value go up. And I would be pissed that I couldn't buy that one house that I liked when I looked last year, and now I looked at it again, and it's worth $30,000 more. Crazy, crazy times we live in, for sure. So luckily I had a friend that was a real estate agent, and he was nice enough to let me look at any house I wanted to look at. Foreclose, repo, condemned, you name it, we looked at them. In fact, we looked at almost 75 houses before I picked this one. Why did I pick this one? I don't know. I must have been a sucker for the air-conditioned garage. Oh, I know why I picked this house. This house was cheap. This house was actually not condemned, not foreclosed, and it wasn't junked. Uh, it had a few big minor issues that I knew I could take care of. The first issue I noticed this house had, it has a pool. Pools are a nightmare. Stay away unless you want to pay to play. So this house still has a pool and the demo is actually in process. I just was approved by the city to start the demolition process. I have a permit now and I'm able to complete the work whenever I want. The roof inspector is coming today, in fact here in another hour or so. Uh, we had some high winds and some light hail recently so he's going to check out the roof and see what's going on. Uh, I noticed a couple shingles had blown off so I had to climb up there and hammer them back down and uh, we just wanted to make sure that the roof is still intact because we've noticed we had a drip. That's right. The house I bought had a leaky roof. Yeah, so buying a house is great and all, but you have to understand maintaining a house is also a pretty large task. So yeah, when it was all said and done, out of pocket, I spent a good chunk of change on this house. The down payments are obviously pretty substantial, closing cost, all the other fees, expenses, taxes, you name it. Just remember to do your homework and see exactly what the market is doing when you're trying to purchase a house. It's also good to take along a friend that knows how to fix things. So if they see an issue, they can point it out to you and possibly tell you like how much that kind of job would cost. Uh, otherwise, if you're buying a house and it's your first time, I would suggest a good real estate agent. Of course, there is no need for a real estate agent. You can do everything yourself. Now that's going to require a lot more effort on your part, but if you're willing to do the time, go for it.
So if you've watched the video this long, I'll go ahead and tell you the reason I'm getting all of these projects buttoned up right now, I am actually getting ready to purchase our second home. That's right, investment property, real estate. So that's right, this house will now become my investment property. You see, that was my plan the entire time when I was looking for a house. I wanted to find the first house that was cheap, livable, in a good location. And I found just that right here. So we're actually uh, in our first week of closing right now. We found a property. It's in another good location and it needs work. So can you guess what I'm going to do with that property? Well, hit subscribe below and follow me on my journey in real estate. Oh man, I could use a Coca-Cola right now. Is real estate risky? I think it is. Especially with this market we have going on right now, mid-2018. So could I be buying this property just for the market to crash? Who knows? Everyone that's buying a house right now, that could happen to you if you're buying a nice fancy house. Hopefully you like that house a lot. This is where I realized that my memory card had totally messed up and I lost a whole 12 minute clip. Live and learn, gotta love technology, at least when it works. And when I was backing up my memory card, I noticed that one of these files might be corrupt. So I'm gonna be really mad if I told you all this great stuff about my life and it's gone. I've already told you about buying my first house. Now we're buying our second house. How do I share more of my knowledge with you? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can get on the comments section down below. Leave me a little message. Let me know. So I don't really know what's gonna happen next. I do know that I'm going to be doing a lot of handyman work on this house as well as my new house. So tag along, hit subscribe, give me a like and a comment if you would like to see more videos like this. I hate having to say that stuff, but that's what the successful people do. And even if you hate doing what successful people do, successful people are successful for a reason. I think, could be genetics, who knows. But this video is not over yet. I have not even trimmed in any of the inside of these cabinets. Uh, 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 uh. I still have you. So if you're still here, I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you uh, like the video. I guess we can talk more about what I use when I do a project like this. You need at least, I'd say two drop cloths to be safe when you're dealing with paint. You're gonna need paint. You're gonna need paint brushes rollers, stir sticks, probably a flathead screwdriver or something to open the paint can with. Sometimes you're going to need to tape off certain sections of your project. Make sure you have plenty of tape. And always, here's a, here's a great tip, always save your paint swash or your serial number from the paint that you have for each project you work on. Put that in a little file folder somewhere safe. That way you know if you need to go patch up something, touch up some paint, you can get the exact match. So if you've ever considered buying a house, fixing it up, selling it, renting it out, just know it is a process. They might make it look easy on TV, and sometimes it is really easy. So how did I learn to do all of this handyman work? Well, I was raised in a family where my dad did all of the work on the whole house himself. So I watched him fix things, break things. I've been around people that work with their hands for my whole life. My dad, my grandfather, my uncles, see the comments now oh this video is so boring you didn't do anything 
while I'm painting my cabinets in my own kitchen at my own house I'm doing something it's for me I just use this video camera to like document the process for my friends out there that already have their own house what project are you working on next make a video show me what you're working on leave it in the comments below I think that would be kind of fun it's still drying manual focus booyah cabinets painted Good stuff. Nobody wants to see this thing. All right, so anyways, that's it for today. I'm done with the cabinets. Come check out my next video. We'll see when I actually have time to make one and post it up.